one of them is that one right there. That's my dachshund puppy. And this one is the uh, air conditioner in the camper. You gonna be okay right there for a second or two? Thank you. All right, that's where the hoses run, right here. Uh, it doesn't take long to cool this thing down with it set up like that. The air is coming, tying in from up under the bed, which y'all know that's storage back there. Uh, coming into right here. That's where the air is coming in at, and it's blowing out down there. And uh, it's doing a wonderful job. It's a total success. Hey, Franklin. Frankie J, come on, baby. All right, the e-bike. Uh, I wanted an analyzer to, uh, you can see it charges down to 0.1 amp, 0.01 amp, but that's nothing more than the charge on the, uh, you heard that, I guess. Franklin! Hey, boo -boo. You want to go inside, buddy? Yeah, he's tired. He just had dinner, and uh, he's ready to go inside. He's still just a puppy. He's a long-haired dachshund. Beautiful dog. There you go. All right. Let's go back out here. <laughs> Look at the e-bike. And there was something that I wanted to do to help me with manage the battery a little bit more. And this is a meter right here. And you can see it's armed and ready to rock and roll. But uh, this tells me I get at full throttle running down the road, it's like 1185 watts and right around 28, 26, 24, 25 amps. Uh, this is what the controller and everything pulls just sitting. So I ordered this from a guy, I'm not gonna mention his name or anything on eBay, because it was really cool. The other unit fits right here that you tie your power wires into and everything else and I thought oh man that's cool I had a wire running there but come to find out what this thing is it's a GT power analyzer and he just separated the two halves and the only reason I'm telling you this is because I wish I would have come up with the idea and I'm trying not trying to take him out of sales or anything like that uh, the only thing I did different was I can formal epoxy the whole back of it so the wires will. He had, I guess, silicone uh, glue holding the wires in there, which was good enough. And you could go on eBay and find these uh, and buy it from him. It was very reasonable price, $16. So you can buy these for like 10 and do the work yourself. But if you don't want to do the work, uh, buy it from that guy because he did a beautiful job. The only thing, I, I put an extra epoxy on it. It comes with the clamp and everything. It tells me exactly what my battery's doing. Just a really good idea that he had. And uh, made a little plastic thing there to go on the back and what have you. So, But no, it works really good. Uh, another thing I did was I cut my bag to expose my controller because it got like really hot in there. And uh, it didn't shut down on me one time, but it went down on over temperature for just a second and then went back up. But anyway and uh but no this is just a really good idea this guy come up with uh you can go on ebay and buy it from him it's like 16 bucks it comes with like 50 some odd inch wires the only problem is i had already run my wires through the tube so i run it up under my bag here no big deal the guy had a really good idea though uh i just wish to help i would have thought of it but anyway i didn't so Now the controller stays absolutely cool, you know, it, no problems whatsoever. So we're going to disconnect this. There we go. 
and that's how I disconnect my power. I got I use these uh, six millimeter plugs. They're good for 240 amps. But this thing at starting off from dead nothing and me not pedaling it, uh, 32 amps. Once it gets up to speed, it drops to around 26, 24, 25, somewhere around there. So not too bad. <laughs> Great success on the e-bike. It really is. I drive it back and forth. I drive it down to the store. I, it just, it's just nice around this little old town that I live in. Uh, this worked really good. I've got to uh, get everything ready to go because in September we're going to go back to Grand Isle. I'm not going to take the kayak, but we are going to surf fish and uh, we're going to take our little dog and we're going to see how he does with the ghost crabs and stuff like that. Now I'm going to do some footage of that, but this works perfect. I mean, this just is just nice and cool in here. It's 80 degrees in here right now. When I cranked this thing up about 30 minutes ago, it was like 96. Uh, it doesn't take long for it to uh, you know yeah, okay, I was about to say I thought my LEDs were still working in there. But uh no, it does a good job, really good job, and uh, I gotta learn my switches all over again. All right, I'm not sure what the hell that's for, but anyway. You get the point. Works really good. Pulls air through there really good. And uh, yeah, it works. And I did paint it a little bit black. It was tough getting in there. I had to crawl in through here to attach everything. But uh, hey, it works. That's the main thing. So, all right, guys. And like I said, the air comes out here, and it comes in from the back. So, hit like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Uh, you also got to remember, this is 13S 4P, only four packs. I'm going 300 yards to work and back. But I also run all the way down to the store, which is round trip around six miles. You grab a six pack of beer or whatever, and it just never drops under 48 volts. I, the lowest I've ever got it so far is a 47 volt, thanks to this. But, uh, you know, if you want one of these, hit that guy up on eBay. I mean, they work good. I just, the only thing I did was I dammed them up right here and I put some more epoxy on it and then painted it black and just to, just to, make the wires a little bit more stable there and that's all so but yeah the charger works good uh, and you're gonna see it draws uh, 0 0.01 amps regardless so that's where that is coming from and uh, but other than that that's it guys and thank you oh I gotta finish up on that I got to get back started on these and they have not left the bench they're right here there's just some stuff I want to do <coughs> that requires uh, my milling machine because I want to mill this down pretty I want to mill this off that's got to be cleaned up uh, here's all the hardware from offshore electric 1775 motors, the end caps that go on them with the O-ring uh, spot, and uh, yeah, they're still here on the bench. They're going to be done. 
Oh, uh, there's the seals and stuff in there. So, yeah, we're gonna do them. Uh, I gotta get that up and running. And what I gotta do with this is I got three DROs, one for here, one for here, one for here, that I gotta put on this thing, get it wired up and everything, and get it where I can get it running good and which it runs, but it, it, I'm, I need the DRO for more accurate, and that's, reason, that's what I'm really waiting on. So, and I know that's not a good excuse, but I have been busy, guys. So, this back and forth work, this to go camping, uh, you know how it goes. So, and then the shop and everything else, and then me losing my cushy job that I had with Lewis Drivers Commodities and having to go to work for Turner, which Turner seems like a really good company. And I really do appreciate them hiring me on at the same place. And, uh, you know, the work's good. So, uh, and I get to work with some really good people, Jasmine, uh, Tommy, Holland, Brian, I mean, you know, Barry, uh, Barnett, Marshall, Keith, you know, this, this goes on and on. Mac, Zella, all these guys, they're all good guys. All of them. CJ, all of them. You know, so it's good to work with the same people you work with for many years. And, you know, you kind of get to be like a family. And, you, you know, families break up, unfortunately, but we kind of stay together here so it's cool and uh, it's not bad at all the works a little rough on an old guy like me at 60 years old but and like I said the heats coming out of there so that's it in a nutshell uh, it works we got some good success here so hit like and subscribe uh, at the thousandth subscriber video I'm going to try to get Jasmine and Dixon, Cole Dixon over here, two up and coming millwrights, and uh, get them over here, introduce them, and uh, look at some of the youth today, okay? Because a lot of you old construction guys and a lot of you old tradesmen, you're looking at, well, nobody's following our steps. Bullshit. There's some good ones out there. There's some damn good ones. I work with one of them, and uh, <laughs> yeah. They're learning stuff that we didn't learn. And they're gonna be better than we are. So, that's a plus, definite plus. Cause you got to have trades persons, trades people, you know, it's gotta be done. We gotta have them. The ones that are coming up today that wanna do it are really good. They are really good. They're not half as good, they're really good. So they're either helpers or the people I'm going to show you on my thousand subscriber. Really trades me. So that's the cool thing. So thank you guys for your support over the years. Absolutely. We've got a lot more we're going to do. We're going to get these babies done, which has 775 motor. You'll be able to pull this whole end cap out of here. Spray your motor down. If it gets full of salt water, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Brushless motors are actually broke in up underwater. So this doesn't matter. You'll take it out, spray it down with a good uh, corrosion stop or uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. What I use is uh, all-purpose spray adhesive? No. That's not what I use. I <laughs> this is what I use right here. Corrosion X is a really good one. Corrosion Stop, that's a good one. Trio is dielectric. It is very good. So you're gonna have gland connectors coming out of here to tie it in. I wanna clean this mess up right here. I wanna clean these ugly ass welds up. Don't ask me how they got there. I want to clean them up. I got these cleaned up a little bit right here. Got those tabs. I want to cut these down. You got seals going in here. These here will be cut different. And then you're going to have uh, rubber washers going on them. So, 
you know, you're going to mitigate as much water as possible. The only problem with the uh, trolling motor, not trolling motor, I'm sorry, bilge pump motors, they work a long time, they work very good. I get three years worth of service out of them. But when they crash, they crash. That's it. There's nothing you can do. You can't go in there. If you could go in the motor itself and spray it down, clean it up after every use, like good sportsmen and good fishermen and good mechanics and good what have you should do, then they would last you for years. These have a lot more torque, a whole hell of a lot more torque, and they'll be able to turn a prop at the proper speed. So you're probably thinking now, well, you're going to burn a lot of your battery up, but efficiency is efficiency. If you're turning the prop efficiently, then you're really burning the same amount of juice, but you get more performance out of it. So that's the whole nutshell in this, and that's the reason I'm doing this. They're still on the bench. We're going to do them. It's just, I got to get this done. That's going to be a video for the DROs and get this up and running. I have been busy, and I do apologize. So that's it, guys. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I love the support. And uh, let's get these young millwrights out here. 1,000 subscribers. Come on, let's do it. Uh, you really need to meet people like this because they are tradesmen out there and they are young. They're not old bastards like me. All right? Y'all have a good day.